Good evening. This is Attorney Margarita Yu and you're watching Partners in Law. For this evening, kuyog na to si Attorney Annika A. Fernandez, Acting Director, Department of Foreign Affairs Regional Consular Office, Cebu. And karong gabi unas, turyaan na to ang mga services sa DFA. Good evening. Director. Good evening, Attorney Marge. Good evening sa atong mga gasubay sa Partners at Law. Uh -oh. Dayon, suguran na to atong discussion this evening ang services sa DFA. So, um, first, um, natay tips mahatag sa atong mga viewers on how to get a passport. Okay. Uh, ang una na mo nga ihatag nga tip is to uh, ensure that your documents are in order and everything is uh, correctly written, mm -hmm. ang details atong documents. Basically, we are avoiding situations where our documents are discrepant. Mm -hmm. Therefore, maglisod mi yung issue uh, passport nga appropriate para niya if the, if the details pertaining to the identity of a person are not consistent with the rest of his documents. Mm -hmm. So, that's one. Um, Unsa man yung document nga usually discrepant sa applicant? Usually, ang common problem yun na mo, and we get ka ng complaints about it all the time na pabalik-balikon ko ng kliyente. Mm -hmm. These are documents nga vital silang application. Number oh. one, that is the PSA-issued birth certificate. Mm -hmm. Na yung mga uh, typographical errors, let's say, sa pangalan, mm -hmm. sa birth date, sa place of birth. And uh, many would actually insist na pwede ni siya makure by an affidavit, but not anymore because uh, the... Uh, before this was allowed? This was allowed before. When, when the department used to issue the green passport. This uh -huh. is the machine-readable ready uh, passport, uh -huh. MRRPs. Uh, that time nga ipapilit lang ang picture mm. niya script lang ang name and 110 ang name yes mm -hmm. and the the minimum then was ang local birth certificate and probably an ID mm -mm. but uh, so kana ra ang requirements before that used to be the okay. case and uh, it that kind of uh, screening for the issuance of the passport led to assuming identities of other mm -hmm. people so it also became common so we're now trying to eliminate mm -hmm. that totally mm -hmm. by allowing the person to prove fully his or her identity and that can only be done by correct and complete documents so for a while many people were thinking na curable ang defect mm -hmm. by an affidavit but not anymore because uh, our local civil registrars can actually correct typographical errors in our civil registry documents. Kung na wrong spelling, ma fix na siya without going through a court process. Mm -hmm. So it's fairly easy, and because ang document imuha, mm -hmm. we are, as the holder of the document, obligado sa tanga i check yun siya. Uh -oh kay ato agud na ato anang ngalan ato anang gender ato anang mm. birthday so ang requirement gyud unta is tan-awo nato nga sakto ang gi-issue nato nga birth certificate that's one and atong mga IDs i-update pud nato kung ni expire na atong driver's license mm -hmm. kay usa sa mga requirement sa passport is a valid government issued ID how many do they need we need one for oh. renewal and mm -hmm. two for first time applicants mm -hmm. basta valid government issued ID there are other IDs nga not acceptable, like mm -hmm. the laminated PhilHealth mm -hmm. and the laminated Postal ID. Mm -hmm. But I understand that both government agencies have come up with a new PVC mm -hmm. uh, digitized IDs. But we have to. We are still waiting for the parameters how to um, detect whether that ID is legitimately issued mm -hmm. or is a spurious ID. Can mm -hmm. mm -hmm. ti Accepted ni? Dili, dili, sa, dili, dili siya right. acceptable. Mm -hmm. So, the usual government-issued IDs would be your voter's ID, mm -hmm. your driver's license, your license to carry a firearm, mm -hmm. um, your uh, multi-purpose ID by oh. GSIS or oh. SSS. Those are the acceptable IDs. Other than our birth certificate, unsa pa in documents nga are usually na discrepancy when they go to your office? Ang uba, um, Mora gyud siya pinaka common mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ang birth certificate sa birth certificate lang gyud sila masangit all the time kay mm -hmm. na, all the while they think na lahi ilahang ngalan mm -hmm. like um, I, I believe there was a certain time when 
baptismal certificates, lahi ang name, marag na Christian name, marag a second name, mm-hmm. and then ang kanangan sa baptismal certificate mo na gigamit sa uban niyang documents sa pag ID sa pag-enroll. Mm-hmm. And so, ang uban niyang documents lahi na noon sa iyahang birth certificate. Mm-hmm. So, in those instances, we give the option to the applicant on sa iyang gustong buhaton, whether sundo ng iyang birth certificate niya ipakorrect ang ubang documents mm-hmm. or ang ubang documents niya stay the same, ang birth certificate yung ipakorrect. Either way, nagit siya ipakorrect. And we always remind the applicants nga, whatever correction is made is not to the advantage of the department. It's actually for the applicant mm-hmm. himself or herself. Kay, i-fortify man niya yung identity nga, ako good ni, mawagin niya ako nga, mawagin niya akong birthday, ako good ni. Mm-hmm. So we give that person that opportunity to choose unsa nga process yung gusto. For those nga, discrepant ang mm-hmm. documents. Pero kung straightforward ang documents, wala'y problema. Mm-hmm. How much lead time dapat ihatag sa applicant? Let's say, kailang um, mo-apply siya, marag unsay expected date nga ma-approve ni or ma-process sa uh, inyong opisina? We we perform a spot process mm. sa document. So, ang initial submission niya, i-assess na mo. Mm. Kung okay tanan, then he goes on to the next step. Mm-mm. If kulang, we ask the applicant to come back with the documents we need. Mm-mm. In many cases, when they come back and they fulfill the documents listed, Mm-mm. next step na tayo sila. Mm-mm. We adopt here in DFA Cebu a comprehensive processing uh, strategy Mm-mm. where we look at the entire submission. Mm-mm. Okay, usahay mang good. Um, uh, we look at the birth certificate lang mm-hmm. and then naday ubang documents nga sayo po. So mm-hmm. inisunod nga balik sa tao late, na sa oh, late na makita ng uban. So uh-huh. what we do is when we spot process tanawo na mo tanang documents single sitting mm-hmm. then tanang ko lang ilista na day na namo mm-hmm. para inisunod yung balik if complete na siya pwede na siya masunod sa o musubay na siya sa next na process. Hopefully other government agencies will follow suit kay usual mo kay na to na makitaan nga pabalikon ka, ibalik ni mo na nasa'y na sa nasa lain uh-huh. nga kuwang. So, very good news ni for applicants. At least, if you're told nga na'y laking, kaisa ra. That's right. Uh-huh. We we want to provide the applicant the luxury nga na na siya din ha, para mapahimuslan nga na na siya sa DFA, mm-hmm. mak- may evaluate na ang iyang entire submission, dili tingi-tingi. Huwag unsay na niya, ipakita niya na mo daan. If they're sufficient, then walay problema. Mm-hmm. Pero, uh, we we process the the application in its entirety. Mm-hmm. So, sayo na lang para nila. Mm-hmm. Na makita na dayo na mo po doon unsay problema daan early on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Nahuman ng itong storya ang kanyang first time application for passport. Sunod atong storya ang kanyang renewal. Mm, that's right. Oh. Um, natay uh, renewal of passports and we encourage all appli- kanang current passport holders to check their passports and renew it early meaning a year before expiry probably or eight months before expiry there's a current uh, immigration rule karon nga mm. you're allowed to travel only when your passport is valid for six months for each destination nimo so kung mag euro tour ka mm. yeah, line line nga country consideration nimo na six months six months six months so kung france germany switzerland imo itinerary mm. six months valid gina sa kada nasod nga imong sudlan mm. And we reckon the date of the six-month rule from the date you leave the country. Dili sa date nga, gipalit ang ticket. Naamian na ng mga cases where oh. ilang gicheck ang validity silang passport, pagpalit nilag ticket, but the flight is for the following year. Mm. So, wala na nila na-consider. So, um, in line with that, we also encourage current passport holders to check their passports first before getting the ticket Mm-mm. not the other way around mm-hmm. kay we understand nga yung mga budget fares yes. they want to take advantage of the promo rates we understand that but um, remember even if you have so many tickets but your passport is not kanang good for travel dili gihapon ta makabiyahe so having said that um, ang condition sa pag travel is that at least 6 months valid for each um travel, each destination, dili siya nabasa, wala mm-hmm. na mutilate, wala mm-hmm. na guba, mm-hmm. or nasulat-sulatan. Kani kung na mutilate ni atong passport, or naguba na, unsa may buhaton, pailisan yun. Pailisan yun siya. Mm-hmm. Kay, ang, 
electronic chip sa suits sa imong passport na compromise naman na siya. Mm-hmm. And usually, inigbasa na sa contactless reader in other electronic gates, immigration gates abroad, dili na na siya mabasa. Mm-hmm. Even at our level here, dili na na siya mabasa. So, when we renew our passports, we simply bring our original passport and our valid government-issued ID. Mm-hmm. Kanisa, ang um, pangutan na, let's say you're out of the country, nawa imong passport, unsa may imong angay buhaton? Um, mo, mo, ana nga situation, Attorney March, mo rewind tagamay. Mm. When you get your passport, the first thing you do is to read what mm. is written there. Uh-oh. And one of the important things for you to do when you travel is to inform the nearest Philippine Embassy or Consulate kung asa ka mo biyahe. That way, they know nga na Filipino nga got tour. Uh-oh. And they know your hotel. If something happens to you, simbako, sa yun ra mo contact or inyong kauban sa embassy and at the same time, naasat may contact with your um, next of kin in the Philippines. So, it's it's all a useful uh, mm-hmm. tip for for a Philippine embassy uh, official and for the traveler. Now, kung mawala mong passport abroad, the first thing that you should do is to report the loss mm. sa police station. Mm-mm. Kundi na siya ma-recover. Mm-mm. And then, you go to the Philippine Embassy or Consulate and ask for a travel document to enable you to return. Unfortunately, kung na kay travel document, you cannot use that travel document to finish your travel. Mm-mm. Especially kung ubang country pa ang imuhang adtoan. But Mm-mm. if you're just, let's say, if you're in France and Within within that country lang ka biyahe, you still can biyahe mm. around. Ah, so it's for purpose of going back lang to Home. the Philippines. Oh, that's oh. the travel document. So if your itinerary is kind of multiple destinations, mm. yeah, midway sa imohang trip, you lost your passport, di na siya retrieve you're given that option to... Um, sh- well, cut short your travel and go home mm. if that is what you want. Do you have the option, let's say you're in France, you're in Paris, human nawa imong passport? Do you, do you have the option uh, to procure another passport? Yes, you do, but uh, because the passports are not lo- uh, localized, mm-hmm. meaning everything is centralized here in mm-hmm. Manila, uh, in the Philippines, in Manila. Passports come from the Philippines. Mm-hmm. If you have enough resources to stay for a month or two uh-uh. while waiting for your passport, why not? Uh-uh. <laughs> but that's not usually the case for uh-uh. tourists. They, the, because of the brief amount of time that they are, that they schedule their vacation there, Mm-mm. eventually, they get sila. Mm-hmm. So, others cut short or they finish it, but same country lang happen. What documents do they need to present kung kaning nawa ilang passport? Photocopy lang? Photocopy sa passport. Uh, recent photo mm-hmm. and the police report and they'll just be made to fill out a form to apply for a travel document that is for a one-way travel to the Philippines so dili ka pwede ka layover niya maglaglag ka sa layover you also cannot do that so pwede rang uh, ka ng stopover and then Philippines mm-hmm. flight so, kani isa sa ka koan service niyo is kaning change of name sa passport. So, mm-hmm. how do they go about this? Uh, there are different types of pag change of name. One is when a single woman would want to change her surname from maiden to married. Mm-hmm. In which case, we would just need kung renewal ni siyang situation, we would just need the PSA issued marriage contract mm-hmm. to justify the change in surname. Um, na, Mas dali ni kung <coughs> renewal or di, parihara? Parihara. Uh-oh. Kay kung first time applicant ka niya, you immediately want na lang dayon to adopt the surname of your husband. Mm. Pwede rasad basta na alam tayo NSO ng uh, PSA issued marriage contract. Change of name could also result from kanang supplemental report sa atong mm. local civil registrar. Let's mm. say na kay second Christian name. Mm-mm. We can also do that. But in all cases, renewal gin na siya. Dili na 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 to ma-amend ang passport manually. Because mm-hmm. the passport now is electronic naman. Mm-hmm. Kani, before we take a break, um, for those nga, grabe yun kay Mularga dan, puno na ang page silang passport. Unsa may angay nila buhaton? The, ang rule gin na mo is, we only allow the early extension, the early renewal of a passport kung one year na lang ang validity. Mm. That is the earliest nga possible. Uh-oh. But 
in cases where grabi ka frequent ang travel, mm-hmm. puno na ang stamp, the, the advice would be to renew it right away. And mm-hmm. then, amo lang i-keep on record ang photocopy sa tanang passport pages for our reference. Nga nung sayo siya gipa-renew. Mm-mm. Okay, before we continue, let's take a break. And now we're back. Karun, sturyaan ni na to ang e-passport. Unsa man yung e-passport? The electronic passport is actually the current passport issued now by the Department of Foreign Affairs. And I must say, it is the best form of identification that your government can give you. And the e-passport is a result of an evolution of passports. Mm-hmm. Before we issue the green, oh, sa nga brown pag mm-hmm. nga pinataas, the uh-huh. green passport, the machine-readable passport that starts with the XX series. Mm-hmm. And now, in 2009, we rolled out the electronic passport. It is uh, mandatory mm-hmm. that the Philippines complies with the International Civil Aviation Organization rules on passport issuance. It is to ensure the integrity and identity of the person traveling. Mm-hmm. So, we assure the public na the details on the electronic chip mm. pertains to your identity, Jude, and no one else's. Mm. So that is the importance of the electronic passport. We we were shown uh, the skeleton Uh-oh. of an electronic passport. Kanang, if you have a passport now, you will notice that when it is thicker to the feel Uh-oh. on cover. Uh-oh. And we, we were um, shown a uh, passport nga kanang sliced open ang cover. Mm. So when you open it, there's actually a copper wire mm. running through the corners of the cover and there's an electronic chip at the bottom. Mm-mm. So that electronic chip contains your vital data, your name, your full name, your birthday, your birthplace. And if you recall when you obtained your passport, we obtained your digital photograph, Mm-mm. your digital signature, and your thumb mark. Mm-mm. So they all mean that the person holding that passport is actually ikaw. Mm-mm. Sa thumb mark pa lang ni mga unique to you, Mm-mm. that information is actually on your passport. So um, in in countries that have uh, early on, mm-hmm. sa yung nga comply sa ikaw, Mm-mm. They already have established what they call e-gates or electronic gates. Mm-hmm. So, if you're an e-passport holder, you queue sa electronic gate kay contactless man ang reading mm-hmm. sa mga passport. So, an immigration officer will get your passport, scan it through a contactless reader, mm-hmm. and then visually makit na dayon ang imuhang information. Imuhang photo. Mugawas na dito. Mugawas na dayon. So, if ang imuhang data sa screen and ikaw lahi so mm. that's a call for alarm but uh, that is the importance of the electronic passport and and the, the details contained in the chip were obtained pag apply jud nimo meaning kada renew nimo mo gid imuhang procedure nga agian mm. not nga murag ig lahi na sa yeah unlike before nga Masubmit lang kasi mga passport and then days after you'll get your new passport. It was it's not like that anymore. Each renewal ni mo, you really provide your biometrics. Mm. Okay, we we integrate everything into that electronic mm-hmm. chip. Kita marag kanus aman tamarag um process na to nga marag when you go through immigration like e-gates na lang. Um I'm not uh, it's an immigration yeah. kanu okay. it's under the Bureau of Immigration no? but I believe that they have set up Mm-hmm. Uh, e-gates already. I think there are two readers na oh. is swipe lang yeah. imohang passport and then your details will appear sa international departures. Mm-hmm. Right. Kani nasturyaan man yun na to nga ang atong e-passport na ni siya electronic chip. So, kailangan yun ni siya nga um, hinay yun ni pagka-handle na to. So, natay tips para sa itong viewers on how to care for our passports. Yes. Uh, first, we I naka observe me sa frontline na many of our passport holders staple mm-hmm. their passports kay ang karaan nga passport na dito ang current US visa which is oh. actually valid for 10 years ang atong passport 5 years na man oh. siya valid so maabsan gyud siya sa visa mm-hmm. um, we we really discourage stapling your passports together if you would have to bring them nga dungan you just put them in a sleeve mm-hmm. And uh, not and not to perforate it with a stapler. Kaya maguba ang copper na wire inside. Mm-hmm. 
um, we don't also advise nga ibutang siya og jacket where you bend mm. the passport. Ah, kanang nai um, cover. Oh, kanang so, cover nga you'll have to bend it fully para isood siya oh. sa sleeve. Kay no? daghan kay magbuhat ani. Oh. oh. And amo gina discourage kay actually makabantay sad sila nga ang the bone sa imong passport mura siya og mo nylinya mm-hmm. kasi you have to bend it fully para masood lang siya ana nga mm. mura jacket. No, that, that's what we don't bend don't perforate don't expose it to excessive moisture or temperature so daghan sa mga instances nga mayab-an og perfume kas naa sa bag Bagong. yeah and pet nya wa dili siya protected by a uh, uh, plastic nga ziplock usually uh, kami as uh, in in the department we practice nga mag, we put our passports in a ziplock lang Mm-mm. just so nga protected lang siya from moisture Mm-mm. if we have to put them together with our other items in the bag. So, that's one. Second, uh, dili sad na to siya ibutang within reach of children. Mm. We have many instances where gihi mong coloring book or gihi mong kanang, <laughs> kanang artists. Gisuwat-suwatan. Uh, gidrawingan jud siya, ang visa gidrawingan, oh. gikolor-koloran. So, that's that's that amount to um, mutilation. So, so ilisan i renew na gid renew. Siya, oh, at cost sa passport holder so sayang ba puno oh. ang validity wa pa magamit bago pa kaayo then pulihanan kay na drawing mm. ano, ano. so that's also another way of taking care mm-hmm. of your passport no oh. din he sa philippines <coughs> do we have such thing as an emergency passport na ama wala tay emergency passport and it is for that reason that we constantly remind our travelers and passport holders to check whether valid for travel ang passport Mm-mm. before finalizing travel plans. Mm-mm. Because we don't have an emergency passport. The only emergency document that can be given to you is when you're abroad mm. and you wish to go home. Katong travel, travel document. document. Oh. That's right. But when you're still in the Philippines, di ka pwede ma-avail ang yung travel. You must renew good. You must renew your passport. Oh. Although currently, the department has given um process where you'll be allowed to have your passport extended for a limited period Mm-mm. if you're a current passport holder. Mm. So, dili pa expired ang passport, we can extend. Mm-mm. Usually, ang reasons for the extension would be there is an emergency, uh-uh. a death in the family, you need to satisfy a court process abroad, mm-hmm. you need to appear as a witness probably in a court, mm-hmm. in a foreign court. Those are one of the reasons. And also the most important reason that we usually encounter these days is when an OFW needs to be deployed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kulang ang validity sa passport. We can extend. Mm-hmm. But as usual, we need to we require justification for the extension. And we always advise the applicant to simultaneously renew. Uh, okay. Bali ang extension is only to satisfy the, the portion nga maka-travel siya uh-uh. for, for the purpose of the travel lang nga impending. But Merk, so maho one time lang yun. You can only re- uh, extend your passport once. Mm-mm. So mintras ka na pa extend, kinahan lang po ni mo i-renew so that kumahan. Ah, so dungan nun yun na. Dungan nun yun siya. So that when you come back from that travel for mm-hmm. which your passport was extended, na na mo ang bagong nga passport. So wala na kay worry sa next na mga travel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Kanis, um, isa sa na to i-discuss kaning verification of passports of those offloaded passengers. Mm, that's right. Kanus ama ni mahita mo? The na, member ng DFA sa kana task yeah, force against uh, oh. trafficking and as partners of the of the Department of Justice, we are mandated to verify the legitimate issuance of a passport. Mm-hmm. Mora sa naang function sa DFA. Dili san mi maka we don't confiscate the passport because mm-hmm. it's DOJ who has custody of the passport. Mm-hmm. Of, offloaded passengers. So, our job is to verify nga legitimately issued ni nga passport ani nga tao. Mm-mm. And then, that's it. And then, DOJ will perform its own in- investigation separately. Kaya, di ba, as long as you have a Philippine passport, we can travel to ASEAN countries, di ba? Yes, that's right. Uh, then, with, uh, I would like to believe nga without discretion atong, or with discretion atong immigration to let you leave if they think nga your travel is not legitimate Yes, it, oh. that's right. It's difficult to kanang draw a straight uh, oh, oh. A, a line through it, no, to saying uh, 
fishy ni siya uh-uh. or kanidili ni siya fishy kay I think the I think immigration officials also have their own technique of detecting think, uh, whether traveler gini siya, tourist gini siya, or lahi ang yang purpose niya mm-hmm. travel. So, with that, I think we we leave it to the enforcers sa uh, anti-trafficking. Mm-hmm. To Kay understand sa niya, liability sa kaysa tong country nga. If they go to another country, then they'll be trafficked there, then they need to be sent back here. Of course, it's to That's the right. expense sa tong yes. country. Yes, and more than that, it's 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 also to the disadvantage of that person na trafficked. Mm-hmm. Siya ang luoy actually. Mm-hmm. So, we're avoiding the situation where masubjected siya ang situation. Mm-hmm. Okay, very common naman kay Karen ang human trafficking. With, right. um, it's done online na, na pero sa unang uh, recruitment is done manually. That's right. <laughs> lahit na. Oh, lahit na Karen. Uh-huh. So Karen, story, ano to ang three pillars sa DFA. So, unsam ning three pillars na to sa Department of Foreign Affairs? There are, uh, we, the Department of Foreign Affairs is fueled and mm-hmm. supported by the three pillars. First is uh, promoting national security. Mm-mm. Second is economic diplomacy, and third is assistance to nationals abroad. Mm-mm. For the Department of Foreign Affairs in Cebu, strongest na mga pillar. Mm-mm. It's the pillar that we are doing actually. Yeah. We assist assi- assist our uh, fellow Filipinos abroad Mm-mm. through their families who are actually here. Mm-mm. So let's say there is a Philip, there is an OFW abroad, and then I nahitabo niya, for instance, na hospitalized siya. Mm. Ang yung next of kin can easily come to the Department of Foreign Affairs and ask for assistance mm. to ascertain the condition of the OFW. Mm-mm. Kung okay lang ba? Mm. Kung na discharge na ba sa hospital? Mm-mm. If kinahan lang bang irepatriate pa uli? Mm-mm. And our job is to coordinate with the Office of the Undersecretary for Migrant Workers Affairs in Manila Mm-mm. and the Foreign Service Post abroad. Mm-mm. So it's either the Philippine Embassy or the Philippine Consulate kung asa ang OFW. Mm-hmm. We also, aside from ascertaining the condition of the OFW, mo assist po sa uh, whereabouts, kanang ipangita. Mm-mm. Mo tabang sa tag remind sa OFW sa ilang financial nga obligation sa ilang pamilya diri kay usahay na yung mga next of kin din himo dool na mo and mga yung tabang uh, magpadala og support ang OFW kay probably nakalimtan uh, for some reason so tabang tag remind nila Mm-mm. sa ilang financial obligation sa ilang families here at most kaning <coughs> reminders sa ilang financial obligation, what's the most that DFA can do to the OFW abroad? Let's say, what is siya nagpada na din hi financial support sa iyang pamilya? In many cases, and mo succeed ba yung atong uh-huh. embassy o consulate, no? tawagad lang sa atong assistance to nationals officer abroad. There's mm-hmm. actually a unit called assistance to nationals. It's an ATN unit mm-hmm. sa kada consulate or embassy na to. And it is a unique feature in Philippine Foreign Service. Other governments don't have that. Mm-hmm. So, ang assistance to nationals officer mo tawag sa FW, may nga siya, sir, nakadawat mo may information, ni request in town ni mong wife na mm-hmm kung mahimo magpadala niya. It's usually na magpadala ang OFW niya. Wala excuse or ma-offer a reason like let's say na wala ang ATM or for mm. whatever reason. No? Pero they, w- the moment nga i-contact sila sa embassy, they feel na oo, oh, oo, di ay no. Magpadada ay ko. <laughs> Nakalimtan di ay. Nakalimtan di ay. But, but uh, the, the ATN officer uh, is effective mm-hmm. na Tawagan, uh, it's it's that easy actually. Basta mm-hmm. nalang may contact details. Kung registered sa embassy ang Filipino, we are able to contact him directly or through the kanang Filipino community Oo. nga mo reach out atong nga OFW. Unsa pa ilain mga assistance gihatag sa itong mga OFW? Um, from our end, mo mm-hmm. assist po mi o endorse kanabit ang mga OFWs na ito na humana ilang kontrata mm-hmm. or na pre-terminate kay na hospitalized niya, wala nakapatayan ng trabaho. Adun na end of service benefits mm-hmm. ang atong OFWs. O kung appeal na siya sa contract, pwede tang mo remind sa employer through our Philippine Embassy or Consulate Abroad na nani siya end of service benefits i-endorse na sa DFA aron mahatag na to sa hingtong ben. Oh. Unsa ning end of service benefits na to? 
depende na siya sa value sa contract or mm. sa salary uh. or kanang qualification sa OFW. Mm. And uh, it's usually given kung ni end na ang service sa tao mm-hmm. for any reason. Basta dili siya ang nag-terminate sa kontrata. Mm-hmm. So termination of the contract without to, completion. Oh. Uh. For for instance kanang I decide kung na-complete na ang uh. contract, na niya ang kontrata oh. fully, end of service benefits pa. Oh, naagihapon. Naagihapon. Kung na-preterminate siya for reasons nga na-hospitalize siya on the job, mm. or na-accidente siya mm. to, while working, aside from the other benefits due him tungod kay na-hospitalize siya, Mm-mm. napagod na end of service benefits. Oh. And everything is coursed through our Office of the Undersecretary for Migrant Workers Affairs. Mogi na siya among Mother Yusek. Mm. Okay. Before we continue, let's take another break. Okay, now we're back. Um, balik ta sa tong discussions. Um, unsa pa may in assistance mahatag sa tong mga Filipinos overseas? Mm. The um, did he sa DFA Cebu facilitation regular ng mm-hmm. We are your we are the channel Mm-mm. of the OFW or their next of kin sa atong embassy abroad. Now, the situation sa Philippine embassy o consulate abroad, lahi sad. It's mm-hmm. like uh, it's like our office being replicated abroad. Mm-hmm. So, ang atong Philippine embassy o consulate, maka-issue sila o passport, mm-hmm. maka-issue sila o identification card, mm-hmm. inig-register sa Filipino, maka- register po sila as uh, voter sa atong mm. embassy na atay mga overseas absentee voting registration period niya na asad mag mobile assistance po dang atong embassy o consulates abroad. tanan na tong embassies maka offer ba og overseas voting or selected few lang tanan ah, tanan. tanan kung na kung asa na ay filipino Mm-mm. and kung na ay ni register as an OAV Mm-mm. pwede sila mo vote Mm-mm. abroad so, we work with Comelec in that mm-hmm. regard. Pwede sa ta mo issue o ka ng... Mudawat sa taog reports mm-hmm. of uh, vital events like birth, kasal, mm-hmm. and death. Mm-hmm. That is uh, what our Philippine Embassy and Consulates do mm-hmm. to our, for our um, Filipinos abroad. The situations vary mm-hmm. in so many ways. And mainly the differences begin from whether that country has a labor agreement with ours. Mm-mm. So it's easy for uh, an overseas contract worker to thrive in, let's say, the U.S. Mm-mm. Cannot a labor agreement with the U.S. Mm. In many other countries, wala tay labor agreement with them. So mm. ang mga Filipinos dito in town, they are undocumented but are thriving. Mm-mm. Na sila decent na panginabuhi. It's just that wala sila working visa. Mm. So, the other um, assistance pod and probably to clear na lang pod some concerns sa uban, some uh, undocumented Filipinos are hesitant to approach Mm-mm. our embassies and consulates abroad. Kaya lang thinking i-report sila for deportation. Mm-mm. Actually, we don't do that. So what will happen? Let's say undocumented sila, mo sila sa tong consular office. What will happen For to them? For any service ng ilang kinahanlan, i-extend na mo sila ang service. So, mm. oh, the Foreign Service Act of 1991 mandates us of what is called foreign service responsibility. Mm. So regardless of status sa Filipino abroad, Mm-mm. i-welcome na mo siya sa embassy or sa consulate. For any service ng pangayuon niya from us. Mm-hmm. So, whether documented mm-hmm. or undocumented, issue ha na passport, mm-hmm. parehistro, iparehistro as a voter, mm-hmm. pag iparehistro as counted sa embassy, mm-hmm. uh, kay kanang mga, we, we need the number of uh, registrants kana bitang when we craft or update our contingency plans. Mm-hmm. Uh, kung naimahita mo ang country, how many people, how many Filipinos are expected to be there and pulled out uh-uh. for evacuation, for evacuation, for repatriation, or for what have you. So important po na namo register sila. Mm-hmm. But uh, going back to the question, dili mo matter. 
mm-hmm. ang status sa Filipino. Basta mo dool siya na more doors are open for all mm-hmm. of them. At least, naklaro na sa itong viewers, whether you're a documented Filipino abroad or undocumented, ang atong consular office na adin ha para mo tabang ka na to. Mm, Maserve oh. nila. Human, ana, um, napatay lang inipuno sa kaning assistance na to. to no, that's uh, basically it. Oh. Kaning repatriation of human remains, how do we go about this? Mm. Uh, the process begins abroad. Uh-oh. Uh, we we go through uh, certain clearances uh, mm-hmm. in accordance with local regulations. So, if let's say common na mga repatriation are uh, gigan sa Middle East, Mm-mm. so ato sang tiwason ang clearances sa local authorities. Ang police, ang judge should mm-hmm. say nga pwede ni siya, cleared ni siya na mm-hmm. i-repatriate i- from the Middle East to the country of origin niya. Mm-hmm. So, after masatisfy na tanan, ang role sa DFA diri sa Cebu is to inform the family nga na ay repatriation nga mo take place, maabot ang patayng lawas. Mm-hmm. And there has to be a next of kin nga mo dawat to mm-hmm. be the consignee. Mm-hmm. So, that consignee will have to sign a letter of acceptance. Mm-hmm. So, siya na responsible mm-hmm. for receiving the mm-hmm. human remains. So, Mao lang gihapon facilitation ng among assistance nga mahatag mm-hmm. din he abroad mm-hmm. ang mabuhat sa atong Philippine Embassy o Consulate is to fast track sigig follow up mm-hmm. aron mahuman ang clearances and ma-commence ang paglarga from that country to the country of origin. Mm. Let's say, natay viewer nagtanaw kayo na as a family member nga namatay abroad, kinsa may una dapat niya duulon ano? Na asya kung naasya din he duul siya sa OWA, Mm-mm. kung contract worker, uh-huh. or mo diretso sa, sa, siya sa AMUA sa DFA. Kay mm-hmm. whether or not na letter from OWA or letter endorsement from OWA, we would still send mm-hmm. the request for repatriation mm-hmm. directly to the USEC for Migrant Workers Affairs and to the Foreign Service Post Concerned. Mm-hmm. So, either way, pwede rin kung mas nasa sa Gorordo, makaato siya OWA, why not? Mm-hmm. Or kung nasa sa Mandawe, mas convenient niya niya, mauna, diri sa mo, pwede sa mm-hmm. kayo. Mm-hmm. Either way, uh, mo assista nila. Okay. Very briefly lang, nasturyaan <coughs> na to, one of the pillars sa DFA is kaning econ- economic diplomacy. Merg, unsa may mga activities na gear towards sa uh, DFA Cebu. Mm-hmm. Ano? Uh, ang DFA Cebu is not... Uh, we don't perform substantive functions so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're more on the consular side. Mm-hmm. Um, ato ang DFA in Manila mm-hmm. and our foreign service posts abroad are mainly in charge of national security and economic diplomacy functions. Mm-hmm. We participate probably in the logistical and secretariat mm-hmm. work. Like recently, the ASEAN Institute for Peace and Reconciliation was here. Mm-mm. And DFA Cebu was tasked to be the secretariat Mm-mm. for that uh, conference. So, uh, it had something to do with the um, BBL Mm-mm. and the peace process. So, uh-huh. they participate sa Tana. So, Mm-mm. that's part of national security. Yeah. Okay. Dayon, naman tay out of jurisdiction reporting um, natay two items in report of marriage and report of birth. Magsugod ta sa report of birth, of marriage. Unsa man eh? Okay. Ang service sa DFA Cebu extends to out of jurisdiction reporting. So, sa report of marriage, let's say duha ka Filipino nagminyo sa US pero wala nila na report sa pinakadol na konsulado. Unya gusto na sa wife nga gamito ng apelyido siyang bana Mm-mm. sa iyahang passport Mm-mm. dili ninya mahimo without that report. Mm-mm. So kung nakauli na sila din he without reporting the marriage abroad the DFA can accept the application for report of marriage and we will send it to the foreign service post concerned. Mm-mm. Medyo circuitous lang siya and it takes longer kay mo biyahe man imong papel as Mm-mm. opposed to nga, reporting it there uh-huh. Uh-huh, where the vital event took place. But ma finish ragihapon siya and eventually the approved report of marriage will be endorsed to PSA and PSA will issue a 
Report of Marriage Insecurity Paper. Mura na sad siya na kay NSO mer- a PSA marriage contract. Mm-mm. It's it's the equivalent. Mm-mm. The same with the report of birth. It's also the same. Nabay ka ng timeline nga mm-hmm. uh, kailangan niya buhaton um, outside of which di na, mer- di na siya pa dala say 6 months after marriage, 1 year. No wala. Dili siya mo prescribe nga mm-hmm. obligation sa atong Filipino mm-hmm. nga concerned. Naalay additional requirements kung matug maaptag usa ka tuig like mm-hmm. execute check affidavit of delayed registration mm-hmm. justify lang niya nga nung wala niya na rehistro but the report will still proceed and it will eventually be approved uh-huh. so kaning report of birth even if let's say ang bata 10 years old 15 years old mm-hmm. dawato na gyapon na dawato na mo na ami report of birth of a 21 year old mm-hmm. and naka realize lang siya nga wa siya report of birth kay gipangayuan siya sa PRC for purposes of the exams. Mm-mm. So giapas niya. Giapas niya and fortunately naapas ra pud in time for the deadline sa submission Mm-mm. sa school. Mm-mm. So we have those cases na maapas ra baya but uh, we explained to the to the applicant nga it will take time kasi mm-hmm. mo biyahe ang documents niya. Kaning out of jurisdiction reporting, would you recommend to them nga when you go back to that country where you were born or where you were married nga dito na lang buhata rather than do it here or more recommend nga pun mo to do it here? I think it depends sa situation sa tao. If uh, they're just here briefly Mm-mm. and then di na sila mo balik until after a long period of time, Mm-mm. we would recommend nga mo na lang sila kung asa ang vital event na hitabo. Mm-hmm. Dito na lang nila i-report. It's much faster also. And the documents that we require are actually issued by are actually issued abroad. Mm-hmm. So kung wala sila documents on hand, mura gihapon dili nila ma-complete ang ilang report. So mm-hmm. kung report of birth siya, nya wala siya county issued nga birth certificate, dili mo progress ang iyang report of birth. That person would still have to do it abroad. Mm. or obtain that document niya yeah. kinahanlan ra bang original so depende ra gyud na sa tao kung asa siya naay oras mm. og asa siya comfortable buhaton ug kung makapaabot siya so spot um check of the documents are also done we also do that yes uh-uh. the what we look out for are kanang affidavit of delayed registration kung madugay na and then mm translations of non-English documents. Mosad na mong pangitaon. Mm-hmm. Let's say it's a Japanese birth certificate. Nagi English translation made by an accredited translator before mm-hmm. na mo forward sa post concerned. Kaning accredited translator na to? Morning consular office at sa katong other country? That's or not right. necessary? That's o, right. Mauna. Mauna siya. Mauna so, siya. ang accredited nila would be, let's say, the foreign embassy here. Mm-mm. So, na ay mga Chinese translators accredited by the Chinese Consulate General, mm-hmm. for, for example. Mm-hmm. Okay, Merg, medyo nahutdan hutdan ng tagpanahon. Maybe we could ask you some parting words for our viewers. Mm-hmm. Thank so. you, Attorney Marge. For our travelers, we remind you gently mm-hmm. na we check our passports first before mm-hmm. finalizing travel details. And take care of your passports para... You can enjoy your stay. You can enjoy your travel abroad. And the Department of Foreign Affairs in Cebu is open from Monday to Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. of uninterrupted service. We don't have noon break. Mm-hmm. So, hope to see you there so we can assist you with your passport and other consular concerns. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So, nindot na kayo ni atong DFA office here in Cebu, Monday to Saturday, 9 to 5. 9 to 5. Dan wala pag lunch break. That's right. Oh. And we are also housed sa Pacific Mall, Metro Mandawa. Uh-huh. So, while you are finishing your passport application, your other family members can mall around. Uh, then, parking is readily available. That's you. right. Basement uh-huh. and open space parking. Uh-huh. The walk-in applicants are allowed. Always. Oh, the, oh. the DFA in Cebu has always been a walk-in facility. So, whenever you need, you feel that you need a passport, dili na kinahala ng appointment, oh. we close at 5 o'clock. More again. So, pwede again. Pwede again. Like me, initially, I thought walk-in is not allowed. 
Pwede di ay. Kay before we started our show, I clarified with you na surprise ko. Pwede di ay. Pwede ka ayo kung kanus ano yun yu, yu, because many of us don't have the time to make an appointment even. Uh-oh. And in in many uh, DFA in let's say DFA Manila, magpa-appointment ka but dili ni mo makuha ang date ni imong gusto. Uh-oh. That's the that's the downside of an appointment system. Uh-oh. You cannot choose the date you want, uh-uh. not all the time no, na you get it. But in DFA Cebu, when you feel na you have the time and you, you're you comfortable to do it, like on a, one classic exa- um, example na, to, na recent was ang Charter Day sa Cebu City. Uh-uh. Since open ang Mandawe City, kay dili man to na mo, Charter Day, open ang DFA and Cebu City ra sa nag-holiday. Uh-uh. So that day, daghan kay ni Arena mo. Uh-uh. And then there was no need for an appointment. Mm-hmm. Basta sulod lang nakasulod lang sila from 9 to 5 amo mm-hmm. silang i-serve all of them. Uh-huh. So as simple as that, you just bring your requirements then muli niya ka dito. That's right. Mm-hmm. First come first serve basis. Uh-huh. This is very welcome uh, news. Yes. Uh-huh. Anyway, nahut na nam gitag panahon magpasa before we end our program, I would like to congratulate um, Atong Salyan, si Attorney Hazel Halmoth, who was recently inducted as JCI Woman Dawe President for the year 2016. Then, for me, she was co-host. She was a co-host sa atong radio program na ang balaod karon. Um, mo congratulate niya. Um, si Bulady Lawyers is very proud of you. Dayon unsa pa man. Magpasalamat ko sa atong guest din hinga, uh, gihatagan yun tanya gigayon. Thank Salamat you. Ka Thank you for the opportunity also. Thank uh-huh. you. And to our viewers who stayed with us this evening, we'd like to thank you and hopefully next week you'd still be with us. Thank you and good evening. Mm-hmm.